Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial and in this lesson we're going to talk about how to put sprites into your game. In the previous few lessons we've focused on the backgrounds whether it be putting the foreground or background layers and also doing some parallax scrolling and backgrounds are great for setting the whole world of your game for creating the world in which the player plays in but of course ultimately it's the sprites that create the gameplay of the game it's the sprite that is your character that you control in the world and also it'll be the sprites which are the enemies in which you fight against or try to outwit somehow. The character select screen is always one of my favourite parts of a game is where you uh, get to look at the different characters and choose who you're going to be and I'm sure everyone has their own favourite characters in Mega Drive and Genesis games. You can put your uh, opinions in the comments below and I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of characters people come up with as we go through this tutorial series. I'm going to start this tutorial from the very beginning using a Pixi um, template file. Uh, if you want you can also just carry on from the backgrounds programs that we've been doing over the past few lessons so the sprite will appear against the backgrounds but to keep things simple I'm going to start with a completely blank file. I will leave a link to that Pixie template project in the video description below and you'll also find a download link to the sprite we're going to put into our game. So the very first step will be to take our sprite and to load it onto the ROM or the cartridge. First you're going to have to copy the PNG file into the res, fo uh, the res folder and then we're going to create a resources.res file where we're going to actually load that sprite onto the ROM. At the bottom of the screen I'm going to put up this little image of the when we did the previous lessons when we put the backgrounds onto the ROM because actually the process is going to be very similar. There's lots of similarities but there are also some crucial differences and I'll go through them with you now. First of all let's go to the main.c file and just add include resources.h just so that we can link the resources.res file with our main file. So if you remember all roads lead back to Rome and all different files have to ultimately lead back to our main.c file. Now I'm just going to save and then control shift p and I'm going to compile this and after we compile we'll finally have it linked. After some compiling you may notice that the include uh, resources.h line has a, 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 a red squiggly line underneath which indicates there's some kind of error but actually don't worry about that because sometimes Visual Studio Basic, the environment we're doing this in, it actually, I don't know why it seems to be a bit slow from updating but it is actually linked and maybe the next time you start it up the little uh, error message will go away so normally you have to pay attention to error messages but in this case don't worry about it. It's often quite slow in updating for some reason, I don't know why so don't panic too much that should all be linked together okay. Okay so now it's time to put our resources onto the ROM so whereas before the resource we put onto the ROM when we did the background was an image resource this time it's going to be a sprite resource which is a bit different and just like last time when we had to give a name to the resource we're putting onto there that we're going to use in the main.c in the main program we have to do the same here so call it what you want I did our underscore sprite here but choose whichever name you want and finally, uh, not finally, but next we have to put the file name. So we're going to say which file we're going to load. So it's, in this case it's mysprite.png and don't forget the quotation marks. Now this next bit here is a bit different. So we're doing 6.6. Six. Now this is the size of the sprite in tiles. So this sprite is going to be 6 tiles by 6 tiles. Remember each tile is 8 by 8 pixels. Just like with the backgrounds we're going to have to choose what kind of compression we're going to use on the file. So in the backgrounds one we chose best. Now you might think okay we'd always choose the best because why would you choose anything other than best but best means the highest possible level of compression. That will cause some problems as we're about to see in a moment. You can also choose none so have no compression but actually we don't need to do that. We have a, a middle option we can choose fast so it's still compressed but the decompression is very fast. Let me now give everyone an example of what happens when you choose the best compression rather than fast for sprites. So you've probably recognized this scene before, it's from my Castlevania game and in the original I chose fast compression and it was all very smooth. But now that I've changed both Alucard and the Blood Skeleton sprites to best compression, now you can see it's very sluggish, the, slow, the frame rate's moving up and down, it's probably very between 60 and I don't know 30 and that's because I've chosen best compression rather than fast. Animations are generally updated on the fly so they're swapped in and out of VRAM and when you have uh, this kind of a lot of compression the CPU in the system has to do a lot more work 
decompressing all the the files so you could solve that potentially i guess by putting all of the um the frame animations into vram from the very beginning so they wouldn't have to be swapped out but that takes up space that you could use for background tiles as well so it's always a trade-off in the castle of any game so far i've always just had it so that the animations are swapped in and out of vram on the fly so i've always chosen best compression i'm uh, sorry fast compression and not best compression now heading back to our resources.res file just to finish off putting the sprites onto our cartridge the last thing we have to do is put in a zero now this last number is just the animation speed we will be talking a lot more about that in the next lesson when we're talking about how to animate your sprites but for now just put it as zero and now all that's left to do in resources.res is to save and compile and now let's go back to the main.c file so now we've got the resource load let's sort out this uh, file now so first delete the uh, stuff we don't need the draw text on and so on so we're not going to need that before we start writing our code i just want to have a recap of something we covered in the parallax scrolling lesson so remember the main.c file can pretty much be divided up into three main sections the one before int main is where we can declare our variables in between int main and while is where we can do functions that we're only going to do one time like setting the palette and so on and within the while loop this is the game loop itself where we're going to need to put stuff that's going to be updated with every single frame of the game again and again and again and again First of all, in the first section, just before intermain, we're going to declare our sprites. Now, this isn't a variable. This is something called a pointer, which you can tell by the little asterisk next to the sprite. So you just have to write sprite with a capital S, then do the asterisk, the little star, then a space, and then type player, and then the semicolon. Now, I've just called it player. You can actually call it whatever you want. So you could call it Sonic, Sprites, or anything else. So I've just called it player because this is the going to be the character that the player is controlling. Don't worry if you don't understand any of the text that come up on the screen just now. We're going to cover that in future lessons. And don't worry too much about what a pointer is either. That can get very complicated. So I'm going to keep things uh, simple for now. So just trust me on this one. Just do sprat uh, asterisk and then the name of your sprat and then the semicolon. The first thing you're going to want to do in main is to initialize the sprite engine. Now, the sprite engine is something within SGDK that is responsible for controlling all the sprites. How it does so is not so important right now, but just like any other function, we have to give it some information within the brackets, three pieces of information in this case. Don't worry what these three pieces of information are for right now, just do 000. zero, zero. That's all we need to do. Next up, we'll be doing an SGDK function that'll be very familiar to anyone who did the background lessons before. We're going to set up the palette. This is exactly the same as we did before. So the first in the first piece of information we need to give the function is to tell it what palette to use. So remember we have PAL 0, 1, 2, and 3, the four palettes each with 16 colors. Now you can choose the one you like. I'm used to using palette 2, PAL 2 for the uh, player sprite and power three for any enemy ones and then power zeros for the background and power one for the foreground so that's quite a simplified way of doing it you can get a lot more creative in the future but for these beginner lessons i think that's enough so just do power two for now next up we need to tell it where to get the palette information from now the information about the palette is stored within our file how sprites file that we uploaded earlier so if we just give it the name of that, then that should be enough. And in order to access the palette, we're going to need to do the name, then dot palette, then a hyphen arrow, then data, then a comma to get to the final piece of information, which will be the transfer method. And just like last time we used CPU or DMA, just use DMA for this time. This is where it starts to get very different from the background lesson that we did before. So we're, in order to put the sprite into the screen, we're going to have to use a function called add sprite. So first of all, put the name of the sprite you used before, in my case it's player, and then do equals, and then do spr underscore add sprite, and then open the brackets. And as usual, SGDK helpfully tells us what information we need to give it. Now, this might be a bit confusing. It says const sprite definition, uh, you know, sprite def, but all we need to do is just use the and symbol and then use whichever name you gave our sprites earlier in the when we did the resources.res. So for that file, I'll put it in as our underscore sprite. If you've got a different name, then choose whichever name you put it under under resources.res. 
Next up it says S16X, now from the X you can probably guess that this will be the X coordinate of the sprite on the screen and the next one exiting Y is the Y coordinates of the sprite on the screen. Next up we're going to be asked to enter Tau Atri. Now previously in the background lesson we had Tau Atri 4 and this is quite similar. So we're going to type in Tau underscore at ATTR, then open up a pair of brackets and then you will see the four pieces of information it's asking us to enter. The first one is PAL, you can probably guess that this means palette. So we set up PAL2 with the palette information from our sprite so we're going to use PAL2 here too. The next one is Prio, you can probably guess this means priority, so priority remember is the uh, the order in which the graphics appear on the screen, so normally it's the background at the uh, very back, then the foreground, then finally the sprites. You can change these orders around a bit, especially if you're using your old background file for this lesson, you can have a fun playing about with that, but for now I'll just put it as false. The next two are Flip V and Flip H. Now Flip V you can probably guess is Flip Vertically. So you can turn the sprite upside down and flip H will simply be to flip vertically, uh, horizontally. Uh, you're, you're going to want to do this when you obviously change direction of the sprite, but we don't need to use, we have a different function we can use for that. So that's just what is going to be flipped or not at the very beginning. And finally, just don't forget the semicolon and to close out the brackets and then we're done for this bit here. To finish off, we're going to go to our while loop. So remember, this is our game loop, the kind of stuff that's going to be repeated and updated frame after frame after frame. At the moment, we've got sys do fee blank process, which updates the, the whole screen. But we also need a function that's going to update the sprites on the screen. So it's going to decide which sprites appear in front of which sprites, where they are on the screen. So obviously, the sprites are going to be moving a lot. So what we use is this function called spr underscore update, and then open a couple of pair of brackets, and then and do a semicolon so fortunately we don't need any information here we can just simply enter this and it's fine okay let's have a quick recap before we compile uh, remember the first step was to load the uh, graphic onto the ROM so we had to choose what kind of uh, asset it was in this case it was a sprite so we had to give it a name then we had to say which file it was and then we had to say the size in case in this case six by six tiles then the compression in this case fast and then finally the animation speed which we just set to zero for this example and then once we did that remember we had to include the resources.h file and then we had to create the pointer for the sprite so we created sprite then uh, asterisk and then we called it a name we wanted in this case player then we had to initialize the sprite engine the sgdk sprite engine which we, which we did in main uh, be careful here for some reason once i actually uh, commented out this and i thought i had a big bug in my castlevania game it took me about half hour to find what the problem was i thought it was a big problem but it just turned out that for some reason i decided to comment out the uh, the initialization of the sprite engine that function and i don't know why i did that but it caused a lot of problems so don't do that uh, next we set up the palette so we assigned palette uh, our sprite palette to pal2 and then we added the sprite to our game we did that by player equals and using the spr add sprite function and then the final step was to include the spr underscore update function in the while loop Okay, so remember to save both files, the resources.res and the main.c, control shift p, and then we can compile and run the project. And you can see here that we have our uh, sprite, a very iconic sprite on the Mega Drive, Sonic the Hedgehog on the screen. As usual, if you had an error, then go through the code line by line, make sure there isn't a missing semicolon or a, a straight bracket or anything. But next up, we're going to change some of the values. So we're going to change the X and Y coordinates of the sprites. So we're going to change from 0, 0 to 10, 10. And let's see what effect that has after we compile and run. So you can see that Sonic has moved a little bit to the right and a little bit down, but not by too much. And that's because that X and Y figure is actually the coordinates in pixels and not in tiles as it was with our when we did our background function. So it's a, it's a very slight difference. If we change it to 100 and 100 and save and compile, you'll see that it moved a lot further across the screen. If you've been using your background program that we did previously to do this code, then feel free to mess about with priority. But for now, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with the flipping. So flipping vertically and horizontally. So if I change the vertical flip to true, you can see that Sonic is now upside down. 
And now if I change that back to false and instead set the horizontal flip to true, you can probably guess what the effect's going to be. Sonic is going to be flipped horizontally. So before he was facing right and now he's facing left. That is it for this lesson, a big congratulations to everyone. Not only do you now know how to put backgrounds onto the screen and scroll them, but now you know how to put sprites onto the screen too. So we've made good progress. We're only a few lessons into this tutorial series and we already know how to do quite a lot. For those of you who are quite new to programming, I hope that this lesson maybe felt a little bit easier than previous lessons because there was some uh, similarities with how we did the background. So I hope it's not completely it doesn't feel completely alien to you anymore so a lot of the things you thought maybe are oh, this is very similar to how we put the background on the screen especially how we loaded stuff onto the ram so uh, i think from now on hopefully things will get a, a little bit easier especially if you found the first few lessons a bit difficult because there is a bit of repetition here Although we achieved a lot today, Sonic was looking a bit stiff though, so in the next lesson we're going to learn how to animate the sprites. That's it for this lesson, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further, I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time. Farewell.